Okay, welcome back to our Introduction to Emergy Solve online video tutorial series. Um, in this um, video, um, we're going to continue talking about the Emergy Solve simulation workflow. Um, in a previous video, we talked about workflow one, where we take a model object and we simulate out a single profile um, using an event object. Um, in this um, video, we're going to start with workflow two where we're going to kind of pick up where we left off from workflow one. We're going to take a model and we're going to simulate from an event object. And now we're going to add this population element. And you can either think of it as a, a population element or a sensitivity analysis or some kind of batched simulation that just depends on how you want to think about it or how it's formulated. And we'll show you what we mean by that. And in this workflow, we're going to introduce a concept of an I data set or an individual data set. So let's first start by just getting back to where we were at the end of the previous workflow. We're going to go back in um, and we're going to first let's load uh, Emergy Solve. I'm going to load this, the dplyr package as well. I'm going to go into our model library and load up a, uh, this two compartment model. So this is just our two compartment pharmacokinetic model again. And sort of what we did this in the last video is we did this. We took the model object and we created an event. I'm just going to keep it simple here where we're going to just do a, a hundred unit dose um, into the first compartment. And so into that um, into this extravascular compartment here. And then we're going to simulate. And I'm going to say and equals 48. So we're going to simulate, and then we're just going to plot. And we also talked about request. Or we're just going to request a certain output. So let's run this and see what we get. So this is this is essentially what we got last time. So we took our model, we got our event, we got the single dose, um, and we're going to simulate out. Let's just run this to 72. Um, and we're only getting the single output here. Um, and that's what we want to do. So we want to kind of this is our starting point. This is this was basically our workflow one where we could play around with the model. Um, and look at different elements. But now we want to add this population element. And we're going to do this through what we call an I data set. Um, so just to recall, um, these are the parameters in the model. And I'm going to focus on this central volume of distribution, which has a, a sort of default value of 20. And what I want to do is I'm going to do some sensitivity analysis on that volume of distribution. Actually, I think what we're going to need to do here Let's run this out. Um, let's do every 24 hour, hours dosing for nine doses and see if that's enough. Uh, oops. That. Okay, so there's our um, dosing, and let's just run this out to 360. So I want to get this looking the way we want to look. Okay, so there we go. Um, So now what we want to do is we want to batch this up and we want to look at sensitivity analysis on one of the parameters and we're going to look at V2. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a data frame. I call it iData. There's a function. This is a little bit helper function called expand iData. I'm going to look at V2 going from 10 to 30 to 50 to 70 to 90. So we want to look at a series of volume of distributions. And this is what we've got. So we've got um, this expand I data. It's kind of like expand grid. If we put another element into here, it would give us all combinations of what we put in. Um, but I just use expand I data because it gives us an ID column. So the important thing here is that we've got a data frame. We've got an ID column. We've got one ID per row. And then with each ID, we've got 
a parameter, so v2 is our parameter, and we've matched that up with this column name, and we want to try v2 at from 10 to 90 uh, liters. And so once I have that data frame, I can use it with my event object. I'm going to call this idataset, and, and I'm going to pass it in, and I say, okay, here's my model right here. Here's my event object, here's my intervention, and here's my population. So this is sort of my population or my batch, however you want to think about it, but we can run this now. And now we can see um, that in a single model run, we took a series of events and we've got um, five different profiles now, and each profile has a different volume and distribution. I want to just pull this back to 240 here. And we can see that, actually, let's just, uh, let's just get rid of these two here. I just wanted to get this. So we can see that um, in the when the volume is low in this blue profile, um, things get up to steady state pretty quick. Um, and as the volume increases, um, it takes longer and longer for us to uh, increase the steady state. But at the end, once everybody gets to steady state, we've got um, you can kind of eyeball it here, but we might have the same uh, steady-state concentration, but we've got different peaks and troughs and things like that. Um, but that's just a sensitivity analysis on volume and distribution. And we can, um, I want to just make this a little bit more complicated here to say I want clearance to be either a low clearance, 0 0.5, or a higher clearance to be 1. And we can run this now. Oops. And now when we look at our I data set, we've got all combinations of those. So we've got three volumes, and we've got two different clearances. And the important point here is that we've got an ID column, and that the names of the columns of this I data set are names of parameters in our model. And now we can run this again. This is a little bit harder to see, so now we've got the two different clearances, and we've got the three different volumes. And so we can do a little trick here. And I want to introduce something called carry out. And carry out is a way to copy data from your input data set into your output simulated data set. And so now we've got in our input data set we've got V2 and CL and so I'm just going to carry those out. Like this, this carry underscore out is the function. And now when I plot this, I can still get this, but well, let me just look, show you the output here. So now when I plot this, I get ID, I get time, I've got my concentration, that's what I'm interested in plotting, that's what I requested there. But now I've got the actual volume and clearance for each of the runs, so each of the IDs. So I've got six IDs, um, and I can... Um, I can uh, uh, and e each ID has a different volume and clearance combination. And so I can, ex um, expand, I can expand this plot call a little bit, and I can say I want to plot concentration versus time, and I want to do it by f um, clearance. And we can get this plot. Now we've got the, pl the plots for the lower clearance on the left and the higher clearance on the right. And we can kind of make this, this might look a little bit better if we just say scales equals same. Okay, so we've got the two different clearances and we've got the two different volumes, um, or we've got the three different volumes. Um, but the point here is that, that I wanted to make, so we want to introduce things like carry out. So that's a, a convenient way when you know you're going to be summarizing your simulated data by some factor or some level in the input data set, you can do that. Um, we've requested just the concentration, we're only interested in that, but we've established this batch of, of runs that we wanted to do by this iData set, and we're combining it with this event object to get this batched uh, simulation. Okay, so one other way that we can think about this, so this is sort of like a, a way that you might do sensitivity analysis, um, or just a, a batched set of runs, but we could also think of this as more like a population analysis or a population simulation. Um, and let's um, just show that a little bit more here through an, another example. Now I'm going to, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to load a different model into our workspace here. This is called 
pop ex uh, and let's just so if you look at this model it's a little more extensive but in this um, in dollar main block we can see that we've got a covariate model so now we've got things like clearance being expressed as a function of weight in the model and same with volume uh, is expressed as a function of weight and then we've also got random effects here so we've got these etas on both clearance volume and ka um, so we've got a couple different level potential levels of variability here right so the simulations might come out different individual by individual through this random variability component through the etas or the simulations might come out differently um, based on different weights that patients might have or subjects might have. So let's do that. Let's just try and explore that a little bit. Now I'm going to make an I data set. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to call weight is going to be a, just some uniform distribution. Let's do 100 of them from 40 to 140. So that's going to be my I data set. So now we've got, and again, I've got ID. I've got weight, um, and this simulation is going to work. I set this up because I want in my I data set. I know I've got a column called weight, and I wanted to call it weight because I've got a parameter called weight. And when I do this, um, when I run the simulation, and let's we're going to get this whole batch of weights um, that are going on here. So let's just take our model. We'll keep the event uh, simple now. We'll just do the single 100 unit dose. Um, and I'm going to do my I data set. I'm going to pass that in. I'm going to simulate out to 48 hours. And then we're going to plot. Okay. So here's my population example, my I data set, and I can run all those. Oops. So it didn't like this. It didn't uh, like this CP object in, in the plot. And so what I'm going to do, let's say, oh no, what happened there? I'm going to go back and look at my model code, and we work our way down here to this table step, and now I can see that um, I want to get either DV or IPRED, I think. Um, it's, so it's not CP. I don't have anything captured called CP, um, but I'm going to look for this DV. So let's change this from CP to DV. Okay, so now we, we've got this batch of simulations. We've got um, 100 different profiles here. So we've got 100 IDs. Um, we've got 48,000 rows in here, um, and we're plotting DV versus time. We can see we got this nice population simulation. Everybody got that 100 uh, milligram dose to start with, and we've got this variability in the profiles where we've got um, weight that's just kind of uniformly going between 40 and 140, and but we've got this random component here too. We've got these random effects that are causing um, uh, these profiles to look like this. And so one thing we can do is we might say, well, I want to use this population model. I want to use this population model, and I want to just get rid of these the random effects. I want to get rid of that random variability in there, and I don't need to go back into the model to do that. I can just say zero, so I can zero re, so I add that into the pipeline, and that just turns all these random effect variances to zeros. Um, and now I can simulate this, and now I've got all this variability um, is due to weight, and the weight. Uh, affects um, both volume and clearance in slightly different ways but now you can see when you take out that random variability component now we've got this sensitivity analysis for how these profiles look um, at different weights and we can get this done with um, this is kind of a quick way to get this done I'm assuming that all the uh, subjects in your population get the same dose and they get the same intervention and they get the same observation times we can create our uh, population like this um, and then we can pass that in through an i data set 
And that just shows you uh, how to use iData sets um, and how to use this workflow too, where we take a model um, and we want to combine it with a certain events and we want to implement that in a certain population where that population varies by either its covariates or its parameter values. And so this is a way that we can do sensitivity analysis on parameters or we can start to do some population simulation here um, through this iData set. Um, now you might be wondering, well, what if I want uh, different people in my population that have different doses or different covariates and things like that? And that's what we're going to get into in the, into the next video when we start to talk about using this model with this data set. And that's going to be our most um, flexible and our most sort of sophisticated way to implement these population simulations. Um, and we'll um, thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you on the next one where we talk about using the model plus the data set.